everybody, welcome back to my channel. Please call me DNA. We are here with the Vermander Curse. We're back with more thick women. Anyway, let's get into the game. Oh boy. You wanted to see me, Mr. Vermander, sir? She's got thick arms, too. Oh no, that face. Hannah, why aren't the, this month's profits as high as last month's. I've been looking all over that piece of paper you gave me earlier, and I don't like all the numbers on it. Can't make heads or tails out of that dang thing. They raise the threshold on how much you need to donate in order to get your tax deduction, remember, sir? They did what? When was this? Sir, I've been reminding you about this for the last eight months. But it's actually fine, though. You still end up saving way more money than if you didn't get the deduction, so... With the good lord as my witness, I am being swindled. I will not stand for this. No one gets over on J.P. Remander. No, sir. Not now, and not ever. But, sir... Now then, where have I been donating all my hard-earning money to again? The hospital, sir. Hospital? Which one? There's... Only one in town, sir. The only hospital in the godforsaken backwater town, and they still have the nerve to swindle me out of my money. Hmm. Well, I know exactly how to handle a situation like this. Prepare the ritual, Hannah, and go fetch me my robes. The ritual? But Mr. Vermander, sir, please. This is entirely uncalled for. The people in that hospital have done nothing to you, sir. Besides, the difference in profits between this month and last month is only about 1% less, sir. That's nice and all, Hannah, but I don't remember asking. Now go. We don't have time to waste. Notify me immediately when everything is ready. Okay, sir. This poor girl. Dude, my nose is running so bad. And it will never stop. What the hell? It's a mouse. Hello? Hello? Anyone home? I hear ya, I hear ya. Give me a minute. What is that? It's an anteater! She's bigger than the other ones! Hi, hello there. Dr. Ida, I presume. That's me, who's asking? Fantastic. I'm Morton, the nurse whose transfer request you received. Transfer request? Dude, she's so big she can't even fit into the picture. What in the world are you talking about? You aren't aware? Surely you read the email concerning me. We don't get no regular internet out here, sonny boy. Only thing we can get out here is that old satellite connection. And we ain't got that either. But if you were to help, then I ain't about to complain. You got a lot to learn, so you better pay attention, because I'm only saying this once. I'm all yours, doctor. Oh, shit. When patients come in, I write their information down on this here clipboard. Wouldn't it be better to use the computer instead? No. Hey. The waiting room is over here. Ain't much to say about it. All these magazines are older than I am, and I ain't none of them worth reading no more. Oh, my. Oh my god, her butt is so big. We got eight rooms. Three are occupied and the rest ain't. Mr. Lang Boyd is over in room 1A. He had a pretty bad back injury, but we fixed him right up. Miss Tammy Gills is in room 3A. She needed one of them teeth pulled, and we ain't got many options for and. Aesthetics? I don't even know what that word was. So I gave her some of that old-fashioned medicine I keep under the sink. She'll be a little dizzy for a while, but everything else went smooth as silk. Impressive. There's a woman over in 2A, too. Poor thing cut her hand up real bad on her job, then tried to hide it. Her boss found out and sent her here. I ain't managed to figure out her name, so I wrote her down as Jane Doe and patched her up. Oh, a mystery. I wonder who she is. We ain't known to ask too many questions around here, Mr. Morton. 
We're here to help. Got it. Understood, doctor. Man, this is a weird-ass hospital. We got two bathrooms, an operating room, and something like a kitchen. Oh, excellent. The lights in here don't work half the time. We keep our medicine supply in the OR. But most of the bottles are empty because the budget ain't paying to refill them. And there aren't nothing ever in the fridge, so don't even bother checking. No. Does anything in the hospital function as intended? Not really. And that's about it. Let's head back to the front desk so we can get you signed in and start your first shift. That old sign-in sheet is somewhere over here. I suggest you go ahead and start searching for it yourself, because I ain't about to come looking for it. Understood, doctor? I'll find it. In the meanwhile, I'd better go make my rounds and check up on the patients. Come and get me if you need something. Oh my god. I'm the giant bat lady. I'm thicketh. Alright. I didn't mean to be insulting by calling her fat, but it is what it is. Oh my god. Everything alright in here? I'm fine, Doc. Matter of fact, I feel like I could walk out of here right now. Ow, 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 ow. See, he can't even laugh without it hurting him. This is exactly why I said, Lang, baby, please stay off the roof. It's dangerous. We could pay someone else to clean the gutters. But did he listen? No. He waited until I left for work and then tried to get up there himself. One little gust of wind, and the next thing you know, bam, straight into the hedges. You know I could have done it if he... It, if the wind hadn't picked up. That's not the point. You shouldn't have been up there in the first place. Doctor, can you please give this man something to fix his terminal lack of common sense, please? Sorry, honey. Well, we ain't got nothing to fix that. Now you two try to take it easy, alright? I'll be back later on. What exactly am I searching for? Oh! An octopus! Oh yeah, oh yeah, this is, this is great stuff right here. How you doing, dear? Okay. Hand is fine, no? You ain't got nothing to worry about. It'll grow back. Good as new. Good. Thank you. You are most welcome, dear. Try to get some rest, and I'll check back in later. Yes, yes. Alright, this is, uh, an interesting one for sure. Oh no! Look at him! He's cute! How do you feel, dear? Hey, Dr. Ida. What are you doing here? Still ain't sobered up yet, huh? Nope. That's fine, dear. At least that tooth ain't gonna bother you no more. Just give it some time and try to get some rest, okay? Okay. I like this one. She's cute. Alright, that's everybody. I better get on back to Mr. Morton. Was that everybody? Whoa, 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 whoa. Dr. Rita, the phone started ringing while you were gone, so I answered it. And the caller won't stop going on and on about rituals and demons, among other things that I don't understand. I think that it may be the best if you talk to her. There's always something. Honey, honey, slow down. Ain't none of this making sense. Please, you have to get out of there right now. My boss just summoned an actual, genuine demon, and now you're all in danger. Huh? And who do you work for again? J.P. Vermander, madam. Who is that, doctor? He's some rich city boy who moved out here when he inherited his family's estate. A lot of folks around here have to pay him rent just because his family owns the land. Yes, that's him exactly. I don't know all the details, but there's a blood pact and a demon and a curse and all kinds of other stuff. You need to leave now. Once the clock strikes ten, you won't be able to leave. Honey, that's less than two minutes. Ain't no way we're getting everyone out of here that fast. My goodness, I didn't expect the stakes to be this high on my first night, but I committed at this point. Is there anything we can do to help our situation? I did go snooping into a few old journals kept by the Vermanders. Based on what I've read, if you can make it to the sunrise, the demon will leave. But there's a bunch of rules you'll need to follow in order to keep yourself safe. For example, every hour until sunrise, the demon will enter the place it was summoned to. It will travel down to the nearest hallway in search of blood, specifically your blood. Its own rules prevent it from opening doors to search for you, so keep those closed. What room are you both in right now? The reception area. You'll need to keep that in mind, alright? 
When the demon arrives, make sure you're all in the same room as when the ritual started. If someone isn't, the demon will know. And once it knows where someone is, closing the doors won't stop it. If you're ready, I can tell you what to expect once 10 o'clock hits. I am about to let no demon run rough shod over my house of healing. Just tell us what we need to do, honey. Okay, here's what's going to happen first. The demon places a lot of emphasis on windows for some reason, right? It'll try to use its power to open up windows around itself. You're gonna need, and I cannot stress this enough, you're gonna need to close any and all windows before the hour is up. Leave one open and the demon gets stronger. And you don't want that, alright? If you finish with everything you need to do before the hour is up, try staring at the clock. This is a lot. This is this is a lot that I'm actually terrified to even start. Like, I'm, I'm gonna kill people. I'm sure it'll help pass the extra time faster. I'll stay on the line just in case you need me to repeat something. Good luck and please be careful. Dude, it's already 10 o'clock. I don't know what to do. Are we just waiting it out then? I know. The kids, Lang. Do you even think about them? Their little heads are probably worried sick by now. I know. I owe them an apology for making them worry. I owe you one too. Sigh. You two all right in here? Yeah, we're fine. Ugh. Well, holler if you need something. What? Aren't I trying to get them out? I'm so lost. Timmy sits happily humming to herself. Well, we're all dead, because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Sir? What in the hell am I supposed to do? Doctor, are things usually this hectic around here? Not really. We usually go... We usually ain't got no more than about one or two patients in here at once. We got three in here tonight. That's not really what I meant. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Yes? Sure thing, the demon will open the windows and you need to make sure they close them all. That's it for now. If you want to hear it again, come back and talk. Please, please be, be careful. I need to close the windows? What window? I can't even tell if they're open. No! The time was 11 p.m. All the windows has been closed, and then it arrived. Oh, shit. Uh-oh. I didn't close the door. <gasps> Bro, I'm right there. Oh, shit. No, not the octopus lady. Shit, man. Jane Doe had done all she could to hide her injury from others. Her reasoning was driven by the knowledge that even a simple hospital visit could result in her never seeing her family again. Unfortunately for her, this fear was realized by entirely different meanings. Well, shit! Huh? What was that noise? Please, please tell me you didn't forget something. I apparently did. You can't let this thing do more, any more damage than it already has. So please try to focus. Listen to this. Here's what's going to happen next. You'll be surprised how much the demon's powers resonate with electronics. I can get access to it into the phone lines and try to gain power, too. You notice the phone continuously ringing, then that's exactly what it's trying to do. Alright? Now, that this is going to sound crazy, but you'll need to pick up the phone up and listen. Pay attention, because this part is important. If you hear anything, and I mean anything, on the other end, you gotta recite this mantra. Your presence is not welcome here. You must depart immediately. Don't worry. You'll remember it when the time has come. But if there's silence on the other end of the phone, then keep quiet. Silence means it hasn't properly figured out the phone's location yet, and you don't want to get any clues, all right? Doctor, you look tired. That's because I am. Then let me handle this things this hour. You should rest. Oh, I'm the big, the big tall rat now.
That's so sad. What happened to this dude? Did I kill two of them off? I feel awful. Dude, nothing is ringing. The job laying. Now you're probably going to have to miss work. Who knows how they'll react. Heck, and I know I'm missing work. I know. We'll be fine. Watch some morning. I'm gonna walk out of here good as new. I sure hope so. No phones are ringing. I'm just gonna... Yeah. All the windows has been closed. But a phone had been left ringing. I didn't hear shit! And suddenly the demon began to grow stronger. Slightly in him due to the old-fashioned medicine she has been given for her tooth pain, Tammy had wandered all out of her room. She was currently standing at the bathroom mirror, wondering who the woman staring back at her was. And then it arrived. Well, I'm killing everybody, huh? I didn't hear a phone ringing. I didn't... Oh shit. I feel awful. Under normal circumstances, Tammy Gills was known as an awkward and shy person. She had wanted to visit the hospital. No, quite the opposite. It was only when her tooth pain became unbearable that she finally made her mind to have it pulled. A decision that would ultimately be one of her last. This makes me feel like shit, ma'am, but like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Um, what was that noise? Please, please, please tell me you didn't forget something. I tried my best. I didn't hear a phone ringing. Can't let this thing do any more damage than it already has. So please try to focus. Listen to this. Here's what's going to happen this time. The demon will try to draw power from any lights it can gain access to, right? You'll know it's inside a room trying to siphon power and the lights start flickering. When it happens, all you need to do is enter the room, close the door, and shut your eyes for a few seconds. You're really going to need to use the space inside of your mind to focus for this work. You'll know it'll work when the lights stop flickering and make sure you do it right, okay? If you don't, then... I ain't as tired anymore. You can let me handle things this time. Sounds good to me, doctor. You can take this hour and then I'll take the next. Well... Definitely gonna get murdered. How's it going? Is it lighting up red when it's when it's when, when it needs to be answered? You listen closely. You can hear shallow breathing from the other side of the phone. Recite the mantra. You can sense that the presence on the other end of the phone has departed. Interesting. Okay, I wish I would have saw that the first time. Is it done? I think I did what I was supposed to. I think we're all good. I hope. Anyway. Time was 1am. All the windows had been closed. None of the lights had been left flickering. The phones had been answered correctly. And then it arrived. Uh-huh. Am I gonna actually get it this time? Oh, it's leaving! Sweet. Here's what's going to happen next. There's something about the demon's power that resonates with TV signals, alright? It will turn on a TV it can manage to gain access to. They never show anything besides static once it takes control, but that's still bad. If it happens, just turn the TV off. That'll kick it out for a while. Don't leave any TVs that is controlling on, alright? It won't end well. Alright. There's a lot. Are they just gonna keep adding to it?
Ow. Should I even bother closing the door at that point? Hello? You listen closely. You can hear shallow breathing from the other side of the phone. Recite the mantra. You can sense that the presence of the other phone has departed. Okay. Good, good, good. Great. Close the window. Nothing's in there. Alright, cool. I think we're good. I hope, anyway. Alright. Wait, is there a TV in here that I need to worry about? I don't think so. Alright. Time was 2 a.m. and the windows had been closed. All the tele televisions had been turned off. Now the lights have been light flickering. All the phones have been answered correctly. What is this? Uh... By this point, the pain meds given to Mr. Lang boy earlier day had started to wear off. She, despite his wife's and stay put, he went to inquire about it. And then it arrived. Ah, oh, well, what the hell? What the hell? I didn't know that was gonna happen. I didn't know I had to talk to him. Well. On the day of his accident, Lang Boy's mind was not on the potential consequence of his actions. Far from it, in fact. His mind was in instant on how happy his wife and children would be after he cooked their favorite dinner. A dinner that he could not afford to make unless he used the money he'd saved by cleaning the gutters himself. The, the grand grandest intention had now unintentionally doomed their entire family. Well, I just killed everybody. What was that noise? Please listen, tell me you didn't forget to You can't let this thing do any more damage than it has, so please try to focus on this. There's one final thing the team is gonna try. We're deciding candles that had the power to manifest them inside its area of influence. It's vital and very, very important that if you see one, you exist. If you let it keep burning, the demon will be able to draw power from it. It won't try anything then after it gets to its part, so you'll have to worry about any more new rules. Oh, and I almost forgot something. This part is important too. Whatever you do, make sure you don't. Well, guess I'm going to die. I guess killed off everybody. Might as well go kill myself. You know. Oh shit! The candles are spooky. Dude, are all the TVs on? You can hear a faint whispering on the other side of Mantra. That's spooky. Bathroom. Nothing in the bathroom. I'm most likely gonna die. I can feel it in my bones. Maybe I should shut all the doors. Stop! Freaking TV. I'm scared. This is actually the scariest part of the game. Everybody's dead now. We're next. Am I good? I think we're good. Alright. Let's head back. Pretty sure we did everything. If not, oh well, everyone else is dead anyway. The time was 3 a.m. All the windows have been closed. All the television have been turned off. And the lights have been left flickering. All the phones have been answered correctly. All the candles have been extinguished. And then it arrived. Here he comes! He's leaving! Did I do it? I think I did it. What? What the hell? Oh, we're still going? Okay. Apparently we're still going. I must be doing something right then. If we can save ourselves, that'd be great. Close the window! Jesus. Hello? 
you listen closely, you can hear shallow breathing from the other side of the phone. Recite the mantra. It departed. Great duty. Kitchen. Lights are flickering in here. I'm gonna close my eyes. I open my eyes. The lights are no longer flickering. You close that door. Open this door. Blow out the candle. Close this door. Hopefully I didn't forget to close a uh, window. Might have, but it's fine. The time was 4 a.m. All the windows have been closed. All the television had been turned off. None of the lights have been flickering. All the phones have been answered correctly. All the candles have been extinguished. And then it arrived. Did I close the door behind me? Are we fucked? I did not close the door. Uh oh. Well, I'm killing off everybody, huh? Uh huh. Uh huh. Man, this is depressing. Literally killing everybody. That exit door looked so scary. Like, just the way it lights up red is, like, really freaking creepy. Oh, it's because this candle's here. I could uh, get to it under my giant ass nose. <gasps> what the fuck was that? I don't want to go back down there. That scared the life out of me. I hated that. Oh my god. The time was 5 a.m. All the televisions had been turned off. None of the lights had been flickering. All the phones had been answered correctly. All the candles had been extinguished. But a window had been left open. No! And the demon was empowered even further. And now almost fully manifested. The sun began to rise upon our little town. And the demon could not stay in the world much longer. It already fulfilled its side of the Vermander Pact. So it departed from the world back for whence it came. Dr. Ida had managed to survive. She was finally safe. Even though I left that window open, I still lived. However, an investigation into the four different disappearances that happened that night was launched. An investigation that was promised by Vermander's influence. Despite her innocence, the lack of evidence, Dr. Ito was charged and convicted in connection with the disappearances. Without her being present to run things, the hospital that had faithfully served the community for decades now stood abandoned. Unable to get the medical help that they so heavily relieved on the town suffered. The, other, the only other person who knew the truth le left was Hannah. But soon she too had suddenly disappeared. And upon searching her home, she only... Thing found was a strange lit candle. In the end, J.P. Vermander got to keep his extra one percent, and that's all that mattered. That sucked. I got a really bad ending, man. That was horrible. Well, guys, that was the Vermander curse. If you want to see me try and get the good ending, please let me know in the comments. Um, this game was really nice. It kind of gave me, like, a Five Nights at Freddy's vibe, to be honest with you. Because, like, there was just so much you needed to do to survive. But anyway, if you guys like this, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to support me. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye!